Okay, so we're gonna begin on our red jacket, which is exciting um, since our skirt is ready. So I've taken the, um, the lining and I've put my um, marks marks. I'm sorry, blanked <laughs> out there. This it's morning. been a long week. It has. <laughs> you're, you're, you're entitled to that. <laughs> um, I transferred my markings from the pattern onto the to the cotton. I've got um, right sides together, and the important thing you know, or maybe you don't know, in darts is the point at the top, the widest point on the side, the sides, and then of course the bottom. So when you fold them together, that's really all you need because these are just join, adjoining lines. And on this particular jacket, we have not only a vertical dart, but we have a little horizontal dart that's really quite it interesting. Gives, yeah, it gives the shape. It gives the total shape on, um, this is a military style costume, so you might want a nice sharp shape there. So the first thing we're gonna do is to join the front, um, and I would do this on the machine, but uh, we're just gonna quickly do it by hand here. So we're gonna join the lining to the jacket right down the center, the center front of the jacket. And just, it doesn't have to be a tight running stitch because it's all gonna be covered with trim. So it's just to get it there. And they could do this by hand or they could do it by machine. Right, right. So I'll put this down on the one side and I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the other side. So remember- but that is the first step. That is the first step is to do that. And, and then we and that's flip why, it. That's why it is not basted. Right, you're okay. right. Um, so then we flip it to the back side and we baste it. You can see my basting is still mm -hmm. here. Um, and, and press that. And just remember that your Frixion pan will go away with heat. So just barely touch this edge yeah, don't want to, to get, get it. Because we don't want to lose all of our marks again. Right. <laughs> so, all right. So then I've gone ahead and folded right sides right sides together. And when I did my stitching, of course, I pinned it. The two dots here, two dots here, and a one dot at the top. And then I just did a little running back stitch for that dart down the front. Then you're gonna do your horizontal dart. So you'll fold it this way. And this one is just like a little half moon shape here. Again, with running back stitch. Then you take it and open it. And then you do a little pressing here and here. That is pressed to the front of the jacket. The horizontal dart is going to be pressed up because it's gonna be that kind of shape when we're mm -hmm. done to give it a little flare to the, to the bottom. So that's, that's the construction of the front. Then we're gonna to go to the back and I've already sewn it for you. I'll take this out. Um, we've sewn center back seam then we clip we do it that on the machine just we do because that, right and clip it to the dart then and we, that's very important that clip that clip makes so, the dart so i mean point makes, that out again okay really, so here's can you see your clip maybe yeah. that's better a better yeah. look mm -hmm. so it just clips right to the dart which i mean point which is right at the end of your stitching then you'll take the pleat and you'll join that center back seam. Then we're gonna turn it this way and we're gonna line up. In your class, some people had a problem with this dart or this, this pleat. This pleat in the back? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they just didn't understand. They didn't understand it. So if we've got it like this, then maybe it's easier to see on the back side. We just take it and line this up with our center back seam, which is pressed open. This is pressed open and it just falls into place mm -hmm. then. So then I take and pin it here, keeping my seams lined up. And then I'm gonna turn it to the front side and press it. And then you're gonna probably it's find- It's a gorgeous. Uh, it's a much more, uh, it, 
we're we're making a uniform much we're more masculine a, exactly so like a, a jacket right so then we're going to take this and trim it off evenly with the outside so that when it's bound on the bottom it it will be all oops, even, yeah, all even. Um, yeah, my ears might come out even, but um, mine didn't well, that worry. time. Yeah, don't so worry you can just it. trim it off mm -hmm. to be even. Okay, so then this is the next part we're going can to I, do. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Can we flip it back over? Yes. So once we sew the top, this top part here, mm -hmm. then do we attach it to the lining to, to keep it in place? Or do oh, we this let part it, here? No, I it, did. Or do we let it hang loose? No, I actually, I didn't stitch it down to the to the jacket. All I did was overcast okay. this. So you, it and just, it just stays. It just stays. Okay. Yeah, it does. Then we're going to do the side backs, and we've got to make sure we're on the right, um, the right thing there. So, in order to get, Can you turn them the other way. Sure. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah, turning them for my view, not yeah, yours, yeah. which is not good. Well, so, I can figure it out upside down, but it would be. It would be nice for the people to be able to see it this way. All right, so um, these really, these side backs setting into the back is what makes it lay so perfectly on the back of the doll. It's a really important seam and one that's on many French fashion jackets. This is makes it just lay so beautifully. But in order to do that, you're going to have to clip really clip this seam. So I'm going to go in and clip it with a dull pair of scissors, apparently. <laughs> and you're going to go... Has the David been getting into your scissors? <laughs> I don't know, but these, these used to work quite nicely. <laughs> right now they're not sort of chewing. Well, they, don't, they don't last forever. Yes. <laughs> so by really clipping this, just short of a quarter inch, we will it does see make a difference. huge difference on the ease of setting this, that now we can open it out and it'll be on the straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to match our darts here, our notches, not darts, and pin those in place. And when I'm setting in a side piece like this, what I like to do is pin the bottom one and the top one, and then work the rest of it in place. So the top one is the tricky one because it's going to extend into the armhole there because if when I get it pinned, I'll show you. You have to think about a quarter inch seam allowance. So this also gets a quarter inch. So your stitching starts right there. If we had it over here, it, would, it wouldn't have a quarter inch seam allowance at the end. Does that make sense, Michael, mm -hmm. to you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we're gonna sew it down. But in order to get it in place, now that I have it pinned on both levels, and I'm gonna undo this, it's in my way right now. Um, we'll just pin it down um, and work it in, you know, called easing. We'll ease this, this well, piece sometimes in. Sometimes there's nothing ease about it. Sometimes <laughs> True, it's, it's a fight. Difficulty. And, yeah, and I can see right now that the way I've set it so far, my middle notch is not matching but it's laying in perfectly. So I go yeah, with who, the laying yeah, in perfectly yeah, part. Care, right, I don't care if those I dark, mean, if it's matching notches, at the top and the bottom. Then we're good. Then we're good. Okay, so now. Now would you ever think of doing the side pieces, the, just the side pieces on the bias? Would that work for this? I don't think so. Mm. There'd be too much stretch. Okay. The bias is going to give well, the, you too uh, much stretch. This is stretch. a jacket. I'm thinking if it were a bodice. I still wouldn't do okay. it. I still wouldn't do it. Okay. I think that 
Well, I've, I guess I've never tried doing it. Well, because but it, you know, all like worth gowns and are those side, are those side, side are backs always on the bias? Really, uh, on the bias. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, this certainly and they didn't really are straight. they didn't do that much bias work in the 19th century because it, it's a fabric eater, but they did on the on the sides. Interesting. Okay, well, maybe I've got to give that a go in one of my next try, patterns, so I need to try to that. If, and you see really because want to it, get the shape. Of right, the, right. Okay, so let me... Of course, me, we're doing miniature, so this is oh, different. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, I wonder if their lining is also on the bias. That would be interesting. I think it would it'd have to be, wouldn't it? Because um, hmm. you wouldn't want to have fabric going one way one thing. and mm -hmm. the other. Well... That's that's something to try the next time okay. on a pattern. Okay. okay. Well, we're back. Yes. <laughs> and Cheryl's getting ready with her needle okay. and thread. Well, I love my needle threader. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so do I. This is my needle threader. Yes, it is. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I, that I, you've been I'm sharing very with possession. me. I have very, mine very upstairs, too. I'm very possessive of it. So, so what are we doing next? Well, we have the darts put in the front now. Um, I think that... That looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we press this one toward the center front. We press this one up because if you think about the jacket, mm -hmm. that piece is going to stick out like right. that a little bit. And then bit. we did the side pieces. We did the side pieces, which are here. We set in those sides. Oh, and one thing I wanted to tell you is we're pressing these toward the center back. So you're going to need to clip just occasionally on that piece. For curves. Mm -hmm. So that we've yeah. got a nice flat curve I mean, curve we told here. them that already, but we're going to tell them I'm again. Tell them again, because that's important. Mm -hmm. You didn't, Not only did you do the inner curve, you're going to do the outer curve now. So now we're going to get ready to sew the shoulder seams and the side seams. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, when you look at antique clothing and you look at doll, antique doll clothing, there's they always cut this on the round here so that it, when it comes over the shoulder, it just lays nicer. Mm -hmm. You've only got one part, the other one's on the straight. So you need to kind of work that in. It seems like we've made a mistake, but... But it's not. not. No. The pad that was done on purpose. Yeah, so remember, don't cut that off. Yes, don't, don't straighten it out, because we really need it on the round. So we're going to... And it's a kind of an easing plan, isn't it? It is. It is. Where you have to kind of ease it. Does yeah, it seem... Yeah, it, it doesn't just go in just flat. You've got to... I'm just... By actually pinning it on either side and then pulling it, you can see where it'll, it's just going to line up beautifully. And we're going to put this costume on a doll that has very um, rounded Did. shoulders. Right. So we want that. Yep. Okay. Boy, that's a perfect match. Yeah. yeah. Good pattern we're, maker, yeah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Look at Give that. Give myself a little pat on the back That's for right. that one. You don't pat yourself, no one else will. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so. There you go. Whoa. Yep, another Twice. one. Another one that matches. Yay. Okay, so we're going to be doing this on both sides. This can be done on the machine. So I'm going to go sew this, and then I'll be back and show you what's next. We're going to get to the trim, which is really the fun oh, that's part. that's the fun yeah, part. Yeah, it okay. is. We have, she said it's, it's on backwards, so you can really see the inside. Yeah, and I want to show you the, um, what Michael came up with. Instead of overcasting, it looks so much nicer. It's just a tiny running stitch here on the edge, which is going to do the same thing. It's going to keep the edges from fraying, and it looks really cool. And so. I could have done it in red, which would have been... Oh, um, I like it in white. Do you, okay. Oh, I really do. It's it's like opening a couturier coat and seeing the hand stitching in it. Well, so, I, I'm out of practice, so it's not no, my best. But <laughs> I think it looks pretty good to me. So the last thing that we have to do to finish the jacket before we start the trimming is we need to 
put the bias on the bottom. So this gets finished with a bias binding. And in your pattern, get this right so you can see, this piece, this bias needs to be 19 inches. So your pattern piece has this jagged edge, which means extend, and it says extend to 19. So okay. the whole piece is 19, and if you go back to our layout in the beginning, it's there. remember we mm -hmm. got it in there because it takes a good bit of fabric. So remember to go back to the pattern layout. Right, to right, part. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have this, and what we're going to do is we're going to even off the bottom first, I think, where we've got funny places here that... Waves. Waves that we could get rid of and make straighter. Plus, we've got a little fraying on the fabric. But we will corners, take care of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's all going to be hidden under this. So we're going to start by overlaying by a quarter of an inch the end here, like that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to pin this around. And because it's biased, just like we did that bias on the hem, we can use the stretch of the bias to make it really fit nicely. So we're gonna give a little pull on this edge as we go around. So it will just continue to go around, giving just a little stretch on that edge. When you get to the pleat, you're just gonna continue on like that. It's hard to believe it's 19 inches, but... I know. That's why mm -hmm. I kept remeasuring, going, really, 19 inches? But the, the pleat it, takes up a lot. It does. So, and we're just going to pretend that I've been pinning as we've been going. And you end up... Just with a tiny little with bit With a tiny a... little bit at the end. And then what, do you do a fold over, what about some... Then, after... Okay, Trim it. so we've got a, a couple well, of well, inches yeah, left. That, that's all right. okay. That's all right. Yeah, we want that. We don't want to be so, short. Let's pretend that this has already been sewn here. And I'm just going to use my pins as a, a stitching line here so I can demonstrate how this goes over. So then this goes over the back and doesn't show at all. So you're oh, going to end and up then with folds. It, and what do you fold the inside And then over? you fold the inside bra edge down like Just that. Just in half. Right. And then the end gets folded back in here. Perfect. So That's oops. a nice finish to yeah. that. So that's always, I love doing bias finishes on, on jackets. I think they it's really fun to do. And it gives a nice little weight to the, to the right. edge. So when we get this finished, we'll show you that. And then... I'm gonna oh, we're going to do that by machine, aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay. Yep. And then at that time, shouldn't we do the neckline just to give it yes. a, a top oh, yes. stitching? We need to, give to it a do little a little more strength. stay stitching, and it'll be just inside of a quarter of an inch here. Okay. So that we can clip it, and we'll add the collar. Okay. So we're going to send that away to be done. And, and then what have we been doing here? <sighs> And I have I, been I mean, working, I've been doing, working, working. You've been making little loopies. Yes. It takes 30 loops between the red jacket and the white jacket. And so, might as well do it all at once, yeah. which is what you did. Right. So let me demonstrate. Let me sit down here and show you how I do and this. And you're reusing your um, um, sh sheet that has the plastic on right. it. Right. So that we can glue on it and know it's not going anywhere. Right. So we're... And this is where a mat comes in handy, too. Uh, boy, it's a lifesaver for this trim. So I've got most of the loops left. I've left two to demonstrate. Now, this white strip that I have here has the mini glue dots on it, just like they use in scrapbooking. And I find that we have two-inch pieces, uh, 30 of those. And it was really rather arduous to get these sewn. So I came up with the glue dot idea that at least it sticks it in place. And then you can sew and it. And then you can sew it. Without the unraveling. Right. The joy so, of unraveling. But remember, this is Soutache, so we can make our loop like that. Just like we did on the skirt, except we're only making single loops this time. And I kind of, you know, 
hand, hand a little, little bit there. Whoops, we need the edges even. So just like the ones we did on the skirt, we've got to make them all the same. So I'm going to take, this is a, there's a dot. Does that show up on the camera, that shiny does, spot? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then I can take and put the two ends. Oh, and our spudger is on the, With the spudger it's like, on our. It's like using. Glue dots. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then I lifted them off of the glue dot page and stuck them onto the plastic. Mm -hmm. And then I took the Weeha made from free range Weehaws. Free range Weehaws, of course. And happy Weehaws. Happy Weehaws. Except when you try to get the stuff from them. Uh, right. Milking Weehaws is not easy. It is not. So we put a little weeha, and then we go back to our spudger, and we're just going to work that into the metallic like that. And then we're going to let it dry. Now, these I've been working on for quite a while. They're ready. So mm -hmm. they're all done. These are all done, and I just have one left, and then I'll have 30. Then we will put it on the jacket, and I'll show okay. you where we're going. All right. We'll get the jacket sewn up, and then we'll be back. I want, to, <clears throat> I want to explain how we did the sleeves here um, because we forgot that apparently on the jacket <laughs> we, here. Just, we just went with it. We, <clears throat> we did. just went boom, busting ahead and um, these are finished. Um, but in order to show you how I got there, we took the sleeves off the white jacket <clears throat> so I could show you. So we've got, and it's kind of hard to see with this because this the white it, yeah, jacket is the the silk cotton. <clears throat> the only way you can tell is the shine on the fabric. So um, you're going to put the undersleeve and the oversleeve together in the silk satin and or silk cotton and in the lining. Then you're going to sew down the long, the, what I call the longest seam here. <clears throat> the outer, gonna, outer sleeve? The outer, yeah. On, You know, we've got an outer sleeve and an inner sleeve. Then we're going to press that to the undersleeve, toward the undersleeve, and then we're going to set them together. And we're going to sew across here. We'll just pretend this and we're, is sewn. And we're doing the same, we did the same thing with the, the red. The red, it's exactly, exactly the, same the same procedure, mm -hmm. just in a different color. Then we're going to open it like this and then sew all the way along the other seam so that it goes from satin to cotton. Apologize, my voice is a little froggy this afternoon. And then <clears throat> you turn the cotton into the silk. You turn it in, yeah. Yeah, inside. And then match it up at the heading and then you just put one row of easing stitches here may or may not be needed but you've got the ability then to pull that thread and give yourself a little ease here nice, to put nice that shape. in mm -hmm. yeah so <clears throat> when we get the jacket we will set these sleeves so you can see how to do it Okay, this is gonna, I'm gonna give you the instructions for sewing this white satin jacket. Um, it's the one that just lays over her arm. So this one is very straightforward. This is um, flat lined, um, the front and flat lined the back. And then you just join it together on the shoulder and the side seams. There's no darts or anything else in it. Um, when you get to this point, then you're gonna to want to stay stitch the neckline, and you're gonna to want to stay stitch up your V here, and then you'll clip it right up to the top, and that's on your, on your pattern piece. Um, then we construct the sleeves exactly the way I just showed you. You've seen the white sleeves for the white jacket this time. Um, and then you'll just set the sleeve into the jacket. The last part of this is that you're going to turn all your seam allowances to the right side, not the wrong side. 
so they'll be turned and basted um, because our fur that we're going to apply next is going to cover all these raw edges so it's going to be neat and clean inside but completely covered on the outside so it's a really this will be a really fast jacket to do for you which will be a pleasure um, and then we're going to overcast of course this inner seam and that's it all right we will okay. we will get that done and then we'll be back come back and show, show the you. decoration yep so this is where we've gotten so far so it constructed all the seam allowances pressed to the right side need to be basted down so so they don't go anywhere and then we started adding the loops on the front on this one it takes four plus when we set the sleeves we have three more that go down there um, but we haven't shown them how to do those yet have we no i don't think so no no we've got a we've got to demo that which we will on the red jacket show you what we we prepped all of them but we just didn't put them on so and we have some interesting techniques that we, we can do share with to make it not people not cry right <laughs> yes that is right so i might as well go with figuring out the placement now because i have one half of that jacket done so the important part is that we get the other gold placed exactly in the same spot so i'm just going to mark that with a pen and my loop is going to go right there that will be the center of that loop okay so we did all of our little where's the spudger right here and the spudger is really really good for taking this. this off because we've made them on the little glue dots and now we're going to lift them and that glue dot on the end is what's going to help us again. position mm -hmm. position on the jacket so it should go about right there and then i'm going to check to make sure that it really is opposite the other side and make any adjustments that I really need take your time to with this make it matters. yes okay so that that's matching. in my eyes i think is matching so then i'm going to make sure now these are running parallel down the jacket so i'm going to mark this first one with the end with the pin here and then when we start to sew it we're going to we've got this end anchored so we're going to take this end and start here so we've got anchors on both sides And I'll tell you, you may have to do this more than once. I'm, I'm going, I have just threaded my needle from the back side. I'm going to take it up here and now take my pin out and make a little stitch right there. So now we're on both sides. It looks parallel to me, I, I think, mm -hmm. by the time we get it pushed together here. And then we're going to begin by sewing down. I like to do the upper, make sure I get it parallel, and then the bottom. So we're just going to be stitching in the ditch here with a little running stitch. And then I cross over to the other side. Remember, we still have metallic trim that's going to hold, yeah, hold this down. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you don't have to over sew it. No, just to get it in, in place. 
And this is the basic technique they do anywhere on this when it comes to this. this. Mm -hmm. Let's get whatever is hanging us up there out. There we go. And I, I sew down until I have just a tiny bit left in an opening at the end. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to come up in that opening and sew on my button. It's very satisfying to get the button. Get the button in there and then it really looks like you're, something. Yeah, you, you're, you've achieved something. Right. So these little buttons have this beautiful metal loop on the back and that is going to be buried into the sutash here. So I'm gonna go like that, take one more stitch here, pull it, and so now your shank is buried. Yeah, that looks great. And then I'm gonna go through it one more time, I think. Come on, there we go. And then take it to the back and knot it off. All right, we only have to do this 30 more times. <laughs> There are 30 of these on there. So this is this is going to be your your evening's work while you're exactly. watching a really good movie. Or so. lis listening to a very good movie. Yeah, well, true. Listening yeah. to a very good movie. So we'll get all these sewn on and we'll yeah. be back and show you the next yeah. the next step. Okay. So um we did a tremendous amount of work on the jacket uh, when Cheryl was here. And, uh, but there's still things to, to, to be dealt with. So one of the next things we, we did all of the decoration in the front, the trim, and then that left me to do the sleeve decoration. So when you do the sleeve decoration, um, this is not in the directions. So what I will tell you is you're going to uh, put this decoration starting a half an inch from the cuff opening with the um, round part down with the button. Now, how I placed it is I used this, the inseam, the facing, which would be facing you, the public looking at her, then just beyond the uh, fold and then on the other side of the uh, uh, back um, inseam. So you could place it any way you want, but that makes it easier. Now, one thing I wanna show you is when you get these prepared, it's probably a good idea to use this piece and leave them there so then you don't lose them and you don't call us looking for them. And then you can just pop them off. They've been wee hawed so they don't um, fray. So it'll come off and we'll just remove this little bit of extra glue and put that in our little trash can. Now, one thing that I worked with this, every time you work with the fabric, you learn something different. So since we're gonna be placing these together, what I figured is you're going to do what you're not supposed to do with soutache, which is sew the round part, not the ditch, together. And just grab a couple of fibers on the round part, not in the ditch. I did it a few different ways because I wasn't used to working with this. I'm used to working with it, but not in this application. And this seems to be the best. And you just go in and grab just the round part. That one out didn't catch, quite catch it. There we go. Now, 
Now the nice thing about having that little weehaw residue on the end, when you go to place it, it gives a tiny bit of stick to the fabric, which is really helpful. My thread is too long. I get after people for this, but it's a gloomy day, so I did a lot of um, threading of needles beforehand. So you can see that makes a really nice finish. You don't have any stitches showing on the other side. And then you're going to place it right here. And then you will put your button right in that little loop. You could, you could sew it all the way up, but I left a little space there, um, almost like a little buttonhole that the button can go in it. All right, once those are all placed, and as I said, you, you can use your seams as your, um, however you do it, you just want it to be consistent from one sleeve to the other. Now the next is I'm going to sew this band. So this band goes right at the top and it, and it finishes that off. So I'm gonna sew that on. Now, again, it's a good idea. This has been wee hawed so that it's not uh, um, unraveling. If you don't do that, it will unravel and you can lose quite a bit of uh, trim. I think that um, I should point out, I am very parsimonious with fabric and trims and things like that. So I try to uh, stretch it as far as I can and I actually did conserve quite a bit of the soutache trim that I can use it to doll something else up. So I'm going to sew this on and I'm going to come back and show you the next step. All right we're back. Uh, we finished uh, the decoration on the cuffs and I would suggest that you uh, sew it around at least twice um, we have measured it to make sure that it's even, and we've got an even, um, it's even as far as the length, because that's going to show. So we're, we're happy with that. So the next thing we're going to do is the back decoration. And you can see we're going to place it right at the waist. We've got a couple of white threads that have snuck through and we will take care of them. So what we've done is we have taken about a four and a half inch piece of our soutache. We have sewn it together at one end, put a little spot of weehaw on it, and this is going to go right in the center back. And we'll figure out which side is the nice side, which I, I think it's this. So this is gonna go right here. We're gonna sew it down in the center and we're gonna sew it just on the loop. And in the center, we're gonna put one of our uh, wonderful beads, um, buttons, I guess we should really call them. So I'm gonna get this sewn on and then I will be back and show you the finished jacket back. We're back, we've finished the back decoration. Uh, you can see that I decided instead of putting uh, two buttons, I put three buttons in the back because I just thought it looked better. And um, that means that the button has to come from somewhere. So I think one of the backs of the sleeves would be a place that I would um, take a button because you wouldn't really notice it. But you do notice it when uh, she's riding away on her wonderful horse. So the next thing we have to do um, it's the second to last part of this, is the lace. So lace goes around the neck and it goes in the cuffs. And this is again in design, this is a very masculine design, but the lace feminizes it. Well, Cheryl has in her instructions and um, how to cut the lace and follow that, which is this is 10 inches for the neck, and then this is four inches for the cuffs. 
So I don't always do this, but you'll notice in your lace, you've got this scallopy edge with uh, this, this design that always reminds me of um, an eye, or sometimes it looks like a little turtle, like a whole uh, row of turtles walking. Um, that is the decorative edge, and the top is called the header. And in most lace, you will find a gathering thread. And so to, to get a wonderful gather, you just pull this thread. Now, I would suggest that you use a nice little tool like this on the end, which we sell those if you don't have one, so that that way you don't um, pull it right through because you can't put your fold over and sew it and gather it at the same time. You have to do it in steps. So we're gonna gather this up to three inches and then which is what's required for the cuff. And then we're going, you just have to do it gently because you don't wanna break the threads. And it makes a very nice gather. So we'll do that and then when we get it just the way we want, we can tie it off. Um, that requires to thread it through a needle, but it, it can be done. So that's basically what we're gonna do. So then we're gonna do this to all of the lace pieces. Then we're going to, for the neckline, we're gonna just sew it right on this edge, right up, because we don't want it coming up over here. We want it kind of peeking out. So we'll sew it right down to the gold edge, and then we're going to put it right in the inside of the cuff, right on the edge. Now, if you have, if you're um, constantly trying uh, the garment on and off, I would su suggest, particularly with a doll like this, if you've got these fingers, to put wrap them in cellophane. They'll slide out easier. So I'm gonna get this sewn up and then I will come back and then we will talk about the last thing that we have to do uh, with this jacket. So we're back and I have gathered the lace to the neckline. I am folding it in about an inch down the front. So it would be coming about an inch down like so. It's just folded over. Uh, I didn't stitch it in place because I'm going to stitch it next. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention, for me, it's always a challenge to sit and try to find the gathering um, thread. But it is there. You just have to work at it till you find it. That's why you need to have a little extra because you kind of mess up a bit of it as you go. So I'm not going to pin this in place because... I feel I have more control over the gathers just by letting it hang loose. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go up in quite a bit and then come down and as soon as I get this stitched in, that big old pin is gonna go bye-bye. So I'm going to stitch this, the header edge, right to the edge of the gold trim. And that way, it will be absolutely even all the way around. There won't be any, whatever the gold trim is, it's going to be even to that. So this is really actually a very easy thing to do. Um, in if this were a real garment, this would be really precious lace and it would be sewn on very quickly, as they say, with a hot needle, not overly sewn because the, the lace would be removed 
and cleaned and then put on other garments. Lace today is very inexpensive, but in the 19th century, it was not an inexpensive thing. It was actually considered um, part of your wealth was the quality of your lace. So this is all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go through and just get it sewn in place and try not to sew my finger with it. I'm gonna have to put on my... And I wanna just make sure if I were gonna have a big amount of roughly edge, it would be nice right in the center. All right, I'll get this sewn and I'll come back and show you the finished product. All right, so I have finished uh, the lace and I used uh, the gathering string, put it, as I said, right on the edge of the gold trim so that when it's revealed, it's all uh, even. Um, one thing I will suggest is that I did it twice just because the, the gold trim is an open weave and it, it moves a bit. So by doing it twice, it really anchored it in place. And as I said, I, I personally prefer a little extra bit of lace in the center back, which I think always looks beautiful on the back of the neck. And then you've got kind of, it just worked out perfectly that there's two little even areas of an extra flurry of lace. And then it comes down as I wanted it. And you can see that it's gonna look very nice on the neckline. Now, I will say that there is not enough lace in the kit to do anything else other than the cuffs and um, the neckline. But I think I'm gonna go into my stash and pull out some lace and do a jabot right here. But I will do that last, one of my last things I do just because I wanna make it my own. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the cuffs, same basic technique, except I'm gonna go right up about, oh, about an eighth of an inch and sew it on the, just in the inside edge, not going through, uh, obviously, to the outside. But I'll sew that up and I will be right back. All right, we're back. Um, got the neckline on, it looks very nice. The next thing is the lace on the cuffs. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. I have found that the easiest way to um, get the lace on the cuff without a lot of drama is to turn the sleeve inside out um, and then turn it up upwards, the, the, the finished edge, and then just stitch it right to the edge. So what I'll do is I'll just go in and I'll grab a little bit of the lining, pull it up, and one of the reasons I like to turn it inside out is I've got my finger in the armhole and that will tell me if I've gone too too far and gone to the other side, which you do not want, even if, even though these are little tiny stitches, you do not want the white showing. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm taking fairly small stitches. I'm not getting really fanatical about my gathers uh, as far as the evenness, because I have control to control this as I go. So I can pick up a little more or stretch it out. Like here, I'm gonna stretch it out a little bit. The most difficult part of this is turning it inside out. That was a little big stitch. I don't wanna do that again. Um, is turning it inside out with all the trim on it, but it can be done. Mm-hmm. 
went there. I could feel I just went in a little too far. I went into the red silk and we don't want that at all. So you just have to do a little light touch to get through. You can hear some background noise there. They're using the big machine to work on shoes. Now I'm gonna clip this off because this is the uh, gathering thread. And I've gone right really towards to the edge. I, I know I said earlier an eighth, um, but I went right at the edge. Of course, it's your, I'm gonna do one more time because I want this to be nice and tight. So that I think is gonna be good. And you can see on this one, I done did that one already, and I think it turned out very nice. And so I'll turn this inside out, and then we'll be back for the last step. All right, so we're back. I've turned both of the cuffs inside out, and they look exactly the way I want them to look. The next thing is my least favorite thing to do, which is, and a lot of other people's, is the hooks. Um, I, there's no directions in the, the kit of how many hooks to use, but I'm going to use four. I think that that's um, what we should use. And then I don't normally use these. I usually make my own loops, but because this is supposed to fit just like this with no overlap, I am going to do those which means that in order to get this to work, you have to set them back a bit so that that way it will hook in and then these items will match up. Now this is gonna be a challenge. So I'm not gonna do this on, on camera. You're gonna have the challenge too because we've gotta get everything to, since it is metal, it kind of moves. So we've got to get everything in alignment. So that'll be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm up for it. So let me do that and I will come back and then we'll show you the final final of the red jacket. All right, we're back. I've got all the hooks and uh, loops in and I'm happy with the way it looks. Um, you know, it's just something you have to fiddle with until you get it just right, but I think we're there. So basically, these two parts of the costume are done. So I wanna do something um, to just customize it and make it my own. So I'm gonna create a jabot. And um, a jabot is actually masculine. It would be something that it would be on a male's costume from the 18th century, but yet it's kind of slightly feminine. So what I've done is I've taken uh, 10 inches of a, an inch lace, um, put it in a little coffee to make it match uh, Cheryl's lace, folded over the, the ends just slightly. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to gather it. I'm gathering both of the headers together. So I'm just going to gather that, not super tiny um, stitches, but smallish. I'm gonna just gather that up. And 
And if you have some spectacular, you know, really ancient handmade lace, it would be ideal. What the lace that came with the kit would be really too small. It's, I think, a quarter of an inch or less. Oops, I got some red. I got threads all over the place here. I need to have Okay, so I'm at the end. So what I need to do now is figure out how big I want to make this. And I think we're right there where we are now. Maybe just a tiny bit bigger. So I'm gonna measure this for you so that in case you wanna do something similar. So I think we're gonna gather it for me here this way. This straightened out. I think we're gonna go about an inch and three quarters, about. So I'm gonna tie it off. And this is actually going to be the bottom of the chapeau, not the top. So I'm going to get that. All right, clip it off. Now, this is what I love about these mats. So I'm going to pin it like a butterfly. No, here, I could do this. Eddie, who um, fulfills all your orders, is my cameraman today. He's learning new skills. So I'm going to pin it like so. Pin it here. I'm going to make this a little more fluffy at the top. drama. You know me with drama. I like the drama. And this lady comes riding on her horse. Everybody is going to look. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. I think I maybe just do a little more here. And pull it out. You can't do this without a misty, um, a mat. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my misty, turn my iron on, oh, it was on. Get all this junk out of the way. center. I want fluffiness and I can fluff it up on the doll but I want that look. So that's the look we're going and I'm going to do the top really tight. So that I want to lay down and I'm going to do the bottom very tight and hard. So that I think is good. Now, put those over there. And now I'm gonna iron these out because these I want fluffy. I don't want them crushed down. Okay, 
So now I'm gonna decide where I want that. And that's what I want. So I'm gonna just do a couple little tacks. I'm gonna do one at the top. There, I'm gonna just decide there. And it's gonna go there. And I think that looks pretty nice. What do you think, Eddie? Oh yeah, that looks really okay. nice. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna stitch that on and then we will be back and we will go into the, the next stage. All right, I've got the jabot in place. And the final thing I'm gonna do, I've just tacked it at the top and at the bottom, not over sewn it because um, a real one would not be over sewn onto a garment. It would be uh, removable. So I'm gonna do one thing, which is I'm going to just lightly mist it. It's not gonna hurt the silk. And I'm going to, I want it to have a cascading effect. And by wetting it slightly, it's going to have a very nice cascading effect. And it will pretty much dry in place. So I believe now, that looks pretty good to me. Um, I believe now we are completely done with this jacket, completely done with the, the uh, skirt. So we're gonna move on to the next thing. We will be right back and we will start working on the decorative jacket. Okay, so we're back with the decorative jacket, which will be kind of hung over her shoulder. Um, so when we left off, Cheryl got most of it completed. The construction is fairly simple. The technique for putting on um, the, the front, front trim is virtually the same as doing the front. It's just that they are smaller pieces and we will rim, they are two inches. So you fold them in half and um, they're two inches. Now, I don't believe that we showed you how to do the sleeves. It's the same concepts as application. I used uh, the, the inner seam and the outer seam uh, to guide where I was going to place it. The, um, you started up about a, a half an inch from the cuff and that, that will give you this blank space because we're gonna trim this in fur. Now, I was very careful with all of the Sutash trim, which is antique and quite precious. And I noticed that we had enough that I decided to pipe the armholes. And literally we had just enough to do this. And there was, by cutting it in half, there was nothing left. Um, if you decide to do this, um, make sure you put the uh, Weehaw glue on the ends. Um, this, is, this is butted right up. There was nothing left and um, it stopped it from fraying. So basically, if we were following what Cheryl suggested, oops, um, the next step would be to trim. But I noticed that when we were doing the pattern layout, there was a big chunk of red silk. And I like to complicate, this isn't really an easy um, garment to make, but why not make it complicated? So I thought, why don't we line the inside in a very luxurious way? So what I'm doing, this is, you don't have to do this, it's just part of um, my process. So what I did is I cut out the pattern pieces, obviously. Then I made a, another set. And then I went and put quilting lines and I am going to quilt it. Now, I did this because I just like to know where to start. And so if you want to have everything line up, 
you've got to start at the, somewhere the same place. So here, here's where I, it could be anywhere, but it has to be somewhere where it starts at the same spot. That way, when you put the pattern pieces together, they line up. So I used a, cut out a piece of just some old, could be cotton, it could be uh, felt, it could be an, a scrap of wool. I happen to have white uh, scrap, so I basted it around the edge. Then I used the Frixon pen and I um, drew my lines on. Obviously in the seam allowance, this is going to um, disappear. But, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to quilt this. Now my squares are about um, half an inch wide. So what I'm gonna do, is just do a little running stitch. And I think I've decided that I like about six stitches per square. So that's what I like. Now, I will tell you, don't do what I'm doing right now, as I'm working with one of my needles that has bent and I use it for a lot of things and I love it, but I want these stitches to be very regular. And they'll bend with this. So I'm getting about what I want as far as um, stitches, but you can see here, I've got some crooked ones. That is because the needle's bent and it's going in. So you just kind of, I'm not gonna waste this thread. And I know that there's a lot of you out there that are fabulous quilters and great sewers, much better than I am. Um, and you could really do this up. So this is what the concept of what I'm gonna do. It's tedious to show you um, through, um, the video. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all in one direction. I'm gonna do it all in one direction. Then I'm gonna do this direction. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go, probably be easier to show you this way. I'm gonna go across. I'm not gonna put lines in it because by the time I get this line in and that line, I pretty much know where I'm going. So then I'm gonna go across and then I'm gonna go across this way. So I always like to get a lot of needles uh, threaded so then I can just really do a sew-a-thon on this. And I'm I am gonna get rid of this. I'm not gonna get rid of it, but I'm not gonna use it for this project. You can see I bent it. So that's gonna make your stitches not straight. So I'm gonna just do that and I'm gonna do all these pieces and then I'm gonna come back and show you the finished quilted red lining. So I'm back and we have the um, quilting done. You know, this is a good afternoon's worth of work, but it is satisfying. Uh, for someone like me, it's a, it's a good thing for me to do this because um, whether you play the violin or piano or sing or any kind of um, art form or craft, you have to practice. So this gets me into uh, practice. And I think it makes, by going across, you make these kind of wonderful little diamonds. Now, I want it to be puckery. Um, and a matter of fact, I'll help it along because I want it to look like it's it's a luxurious padding, but to her scale. Now, I just thought of something which I hadn't thought of before. I'm gonna line this a little differently um, than what I thought I was going to do, which is I'm gonna put these pieces together, 
just like this. And then I am going to take this out, leave the, the no, I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do it as Cheryl wanted, which I'm going to make the lining. I'm gonna fold it, up. the lining is exactly the same pattern as this. I'm gonna fold it up and then baste it around so that that way um, the fur edge covers it. And then when it, when it folds up or say around the neck, which is this a better piece for that, you're gonna have a nice, um, let me go over here better. You're gonna have a nice, you're gonna have a nice bit of this showing like so, but then the fur is gonna be right here. So this is, this is comp again, completely optional. You do not have to do this, but if you feel like having a little fun project, I'm gonna take the seam allowance, allowances just exactly the same, and these should be a quarter of an inch, and they're a little smaller than that. But, well, no, it's about right. Um, here, maybe I can tell better here. Yeah, a quarter of an inch. So we'll, we'll do a quarter of an inch, uh, seam allowances on the side, shoulder plate, shoulder, shoulder plate. You can tell I'm a doll dealer on the shoulder. And I will get this sewn up and we'll be back. Okay, so I've gotten um, all the pieces done as I showed you earlier. I have pinned them and I have decided to press over, it'll just be easier to do it now, press over the armholes, which are then are gonna be overcast into the arm sleeve. We're not putting lining into the sleeves because it would really bulk it up. Um, important to note, you'll notice on your jacket, there's this dot right here. So I have marked this on the jacket. I'm not gonna sew any lower than that because this is a flap. So this needs to be opened. Um, so I'll stop sewing there. I'm going to, just to make it easier, I'm gonna put a few stitches here so that we have a nice line up. I'm gonna put it on the top and on the bottom. And the rest of it, I'm gonna sew by machine. Well, I just lost that. Let's see if I can get my trusty little tool. Help me. You don't have one of these threaders, they're just fantastic, I love them. Um, so I'm gonna just put that there. And I'm gonna do that on all of these. Just It just makes it a easier time when you're sewing up the seams and getting everything lined up perfectly. I think I've used that up. Quilting takes a lot of thread, as you all know. That's ready, so I'm gonna go there. I gotta figure about exactly the, I think that's pretty good. Well, I think I've got that this and I will come back. I've got a mess here. There it is. Okay, that, that's good enough for that. And I'm gonna do that all through this and then I am going to sew it on the machine and I will be back to uh, turn it inside out and get it fitted into the jacket. All right, so we're back and I did all the sewing on the machine don't do what I did. I sewed up one of my flaps, so I had to let that out, which normally I'd be mad at myself, but this is going to get folded over anyways. So what I want to do now is flatten out the seams, and I'm using a sewing hand for that because I don't want to have this extra bulk, so I really want to flatten them out. And as I've used this flannel or felt, it's gotten um, 
it's breaking down, so I can't really stitch into it anymore. So I'm just giving it a really vigorous pressing and I will do it on all the seams. I've done it once, I'm doing it again, not just to show you all, but to, to have it. I want it really to lay down flat. So I'm using my Cricut and just really getting it down. Okay, so I did the same with the armholes. Now, I've decided that I'm not going to attach this to the uh, jacket. I'm going to let it float, which is something that you see in uh, men's clothing, not necessarily women's clothing, but men's clothing. So I did a little stitch around, which you cannot barely see, and then I've overcast it on this side, and I'm gonna do a little bit more because I can see it's plopping, you know, um, folding up. So this side I got pretty good, but this side there's a couple of uh, dicey area. So I'm going to fix that. Then the next thing you can see, it looks very nice. And I'm very happy that my uh, design is working out pretty good. It's I've got some diamonds between the two uh, pieces. So that's really what I wanted to happen. So I'm going to fix this and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to start uh, putting the lining into the jacket. Hello, doll friends, we're back. So I um, have the lining in completely and I think it looks pretty good. I will tell you some things to not do, which I did. I trimmed a little earlier, so we've got one side a little uh, shorter than the other, but that doesn't matter because it's gonna be covered in fur. I will show you how it looks in the inside and I think it looks very nice. Now I'm not at the point yet, but I will put a couple of tacks in the arm uh, hole so that that way um, it will hold the, the lining so you don't see this raw edge. But there's a little trick I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do later, not yet. But I think it looks very good. Another thing that I would suggest, you've, you've done all the quilting. So once you put this in, you can see I overcast it to uh, the raw edges, but then I went right at the very edge and I did really from the inside, tiny little flea bite stitches all along the edge, very tight. Flea bites uh, on the inside and then longer on the outside. And see, it's created a very nice roll. Do you see that, David? My um, cameraman. Yes, I way yeah. over here. Okay. I think I can. I can yeah. see it, it on the it makes for, screen. It makes for a very nice edge, don't you think? Mm hmm. And, yeah. and yeah. It, don't you do something like this in upholstery? Uh, yes. What do yeah, you call the it? Underpinnings. Um, well, you do it with horsehair and you create an edge roll. An edge roll. That mm -hmm. was the word I was thinking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we've created a nice edge roll. So we're ready for the really next step which is gonna be the fur. So I actually looked at the directions and I'm glad I did because I thought that the fur was gonna go on a different way. So if you're working on your fur from the live class, you're going to have actual uh, lamb fur. If you've bought it later, you're gonna get a faux fur. Now, there are two different cuts. There's a larger cut and a smaller cut. The smaller cut is for the cuffs to go here, and the larger is to go around the whole jacket. Now, larger meaning wider or longer? Wider, yeah, I'm sorry, wider. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm gonna assume that not everybody knows how you uh, cut fur um, or leather for with fur on it. Um, do not take scissors to it because if you cut, use the scissors, it's going to cut the actual hair. So what you're gonna use is you're gonna use a razor knife and cut the skin. So then you haven't cut the, the fur. The fur is all nice. So that's going to work, I think, fairly well. 
And by the time I'm done with this, even though they're different parts of uh, the, the animal, it'll look, um, um, it'll blend nicely. Now, if I were gonna lay this flat, which I'm not, I would have taken a uh, an ink pen and I would have colored this black and let it dry, but that's not what we're gonna do. So according to the description, and by the way, I've gotten a whole bunch of pins ready. We're gonna roll this and just do a running stitch to create a kind of a very round, I gotta get it just right, a round piece. So you're sewing the two long ends together to create a tube. Uh, exactly. Okay. Exactly. This is why I don't write descriptions for you anymore. Because <laughs> why? Because I over describe. Which you're very Because good I at don't that. know how to sew, and I think I have to compensate well, for that by telling you every single move to well, make. Well, now here's one thing you can say: Do not sew your finger. Hmm. into, that's why I'm wearing a band-aid because I tend to sew my finger up. And now I did not want to show you this technique because I don't want to be responsible, but if you're dealing with some leather that's really too much to deal with, get your little candle out and heat your needle up and it will go through this like butter. But this is not that um, tough. And I'm taking fairly big stitches here because, you know, now the fur is gonna basically turn over and it's not going to show. And if I get, oh, here's kind of a bald spot. So this one, maybe I will do a little, it's not a bald spot, it's a cowlick. Well, it's no pressure when you're doing this on the video. It's just not a pressure. So, are we going to watch you sew the whole thing here? You're going to watch me sew the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know? We're not going to do this. I'm I another one in the oven over here. <laughs> Cut you well, off now and then come back. No, you're going to watch me do this whole okay. thing. You make me <laughs> suffer. <laughs> I want you to realize it's not as easy oh, as you that's think why it I don't is. Do it. Oh, I you... leave it to the professionals. Yeah, well, thank God you're not in class. It mm. would just be too much. You'd win the golden scissors the f first time you ever made a dress. Mm. And that would cause a lot of problems for you because you'd mm. be helping everybody. Mm. Yeah, just... I like it the way it is. All right. So we're getting to the end. And then we're going to really try to get all the loose hairs out because we don't want, you can see there's a little bit of shedding because that's just where we, we cut it. Once this is sewn, I'm gonna cut that bit off. I'm back to the big stitches because I've got a lot of fur to cover up. This Cheryl got off of an old coat, um, but the people that have the the faux, it's that is really beautiful. I've seen the sample, which is really nice. Okay, so you can see, look how nice that is. So that's going to go right here. And I think by sewing it together, look how look how round and fluffy that is. Don't you think that's pretty? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to do that here. Uh, I'm going to do the other and then I'm going to sew those in place. Now I was thinking about this with the bigger piece. I'm going to do the exact same thing. But I think rather than try to do one piece all the way around, I'm gonna do two and I'm gonna join it in the center of the, um, 
back neck and the center of this flap opening so that that way I can have a little more control. So I'm gonna get these all done up. I'm gonna sew it on. It's just gonna go on with a very simple, um, I'm gonna whip stitch it into place. And then this is going to be ready for the last bit of decoration. So I will do this and then I will come back and show you the finished thing. Are you gonna sit and watch me do this? Today? I am not, but <laughs> okay. have fun. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, I decided to come back before I uh, attached the fur to the jacket because I realized that I didn't give you the whole preparation. Now this really only applies to um, the real fur, although it, it may be with the, the uh, faux fur at work too. So I've sewn it together and basically created a tube. So you can see that's finished. Okay, but it's, it's not round and it's not flat, it's kind of strange. So what you're gonna need to do to make it work is you're gonna need to use your fingers and go in and press it down flat. And it will, just by using your fingers, just going in there and just pressing it down flat. It's not going to make it flat. It's going to just make it so that you can, and, and you can do what I just did to, remember this has probably been laid out flat for a hundred years. This is a whole new way to do it. Do not try to do this with an iron because it's leather, which will then instantly shrink and be a mess. So that's what I've done to prepare it. So after I've done this part, then I've put these clips on it. And this is just helping train it to do what I wanna do. So these are ready. Uh, as I put these on, I'll move the clips. I have got more clips than that, but I, I wanna just show you that. So one thing that was important as I was doing the two cuffs, I noticed that one piece was drastically furrier than the other. And I decided to cut a better match for the cut cuffs. And I did that and I sewed them. And then I actually ended up with this big fluffy piece. So what I've decided to do is I am going to use this fluffy piece right here. And then I will add separate pieces to create this. Now you can do this any way you want. Then I had the dilemma because um, how to attach it. And then I had this idea to attach it this way. So I'm gonna figure out where my center is between both things. And it's about right there. So there it is, that's my center. And I, you have to kind of feel this. You can't pin this. You have to do this all by feel. So what I'm going to do, now this will only work if you're doing um, what I'm doing with the quilted lining. I am going to use th red thread. I'm going to go right into the fur. I'm going to go right back out. And that's how I'm gonna sew it on. And it's gonna be strong and it's going to be easy and it's going to blend in perfectly. I've already tested this because I wasn't gonna show it to you if I didn't know it would work. So you have to just go in. Remember, you've already done a line there. These threads are absolutely not gonna show and it's gonna sew on perfectly. I want it really nice and tight because I don't want it moving or falling off. What do you think about that, David? Uh, fine. You probably need that. You, you uh, took a piece from the long length because it was a better match to the cuff. And, and now it makes you're gonna a nice have collar. To, 
You can't. See? You don't. Yeah, you don't have the luxury of wasting it. So you're no. going to have to incorporate it. No. And the fur and, will all blend together. You won't know it's three pieces. It'll, no, you won't. And then uh, what I will have to do, I'm going to go around once that way, and you can see that it's it's on pretty tight. But you'll uh, sew but, it at the top and bottom edges exactly. of the yeah. Tube. This is couture. You know, it's not. Okay. For, if this is not for right. uh, the quick and easy sew, this is a costume that I think that we'll have a, a uh, they'll be they'll be studying this a hundred years from now and saying where did that come from there's there's a few of these around and the reason it'll be around is because it's, it's well, well what do you mean they'll still be watching you on YouTube that's true <laughs> <laughs> Of that, yeah, I try not I think to think you've of left. A, I think you've left a trail. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be a big mystery. Well, they say that it's it, once it's broadcast, it can't be unbroadcast. So, anyways, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm looking forward to this, and I'm going to just go in and I'm going to sew it, and um, it is going to help give the garment a really nice structure. But uh, when you're doing it too, make sure you pull it. This way, because you you know you're pull you don't what? want to pull the jacket so that you mm. don't have puckering. But I think that's going to work. So I'm going to I'm going to get this all sewn up, and then and then I'll come back and show you the finished thing. Looks good. Which will be on YouTube for eight thousand years. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, we're back, and I'm right now doing some cleanup work reshaping the sleeves using these wonderful hams because the, the sleeves have gotten kind of crushed down um, from all of the work that we've been doing. But I have got all the fur trim on. And yes, you do have to go around it twice. I did the inner in red, and then I did the outer inner with inner th red thread, and I did the outer with black. And that just keeps everything in, in place. So I'm pleased with it. And then after that, I used our little special brushes that we um, have to um, fluff up the fur. So it's ready. So the question is, which arm do, are we going to put this on? And I think that the logic, there's a little hair there. The logical choice is this arm because it's not as exciting as that. So this is going to go on her shoulder like so. Now the next thing we're going to do. Except that's not near the camera, so oh, you need to turn okay. it. So well, tell me where. The other shoulder is near the camera, so okay. turn the doll around so I can see it. Turn the whole doll towards me with the jacket. So Is that work? That's... <laughs> Better, okay, I think. that's why we don't work together that often. But anyways, this is how it's going to... Um, she doesn't actually wear this this jacket. So this is just a decorative uh, piece. And then the next thing we're going to do after with this is... We're going to take this little cord and we're going to make something fabulous with it. And I'm going to teach you that. But um, for now, we're going to take a little break and then we'll come back and we'll teach you what we're going to do with this. Um, that is the final touch. It's the final touch for, for this piece, uh, this garment, and also for the hat. So we'll be back shortly to show you that. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.